All right, so welcome back. On this one, we're going to talk about the curse effect. And now to understand this, we're going to divide everything in parts because it's the easy way, uh, easiest way to learn something, right? So, okay, so I've got a nice guitar and then my curse right here. I'm going to play it. All right. So yeah, nice guitar. So then at the bottom, I get the chorus. I'm going to turn it to turn this on and notice this is full. This is almost there. This one is all the way up and this one all the way down. And this one, it's disabled. So if you don't enable this, you're going to get this controls, but nothing of this is going to happen, which is the LFO. So you can use it like this. So you have two parts, the parts right here at the top and the one at the bottom. And we're going to talk about this one in a minute. So just to understand how this, uh, how a chorus works, you need to know a simple rule. If a sound on the right and the on the right sounds slightly different than the one in the left, you get separation. You get a wider sound. You get the white sound. So a curse will essentially what it will do. It will copy the original signal in this case the guitar that goes into the curse. It will just copy that and it will play it back, but it will just add a little bit of delay and modulation in this case with what you have right here. Since in this case, we are not adding modulation because it's disabled. We are just delaying the copy, right? Again, we have the original and then we have a copy. So since, of course, we are, we are delaying the uh, copy, we get a delay control. And notice it's on milliseconds. So, you know, if I go and play this, we're going to start to get something because right now it's just, you know, we get nothing. It's just off. So I'm going to go and turn it on. And as uh, I start to do the, the do uh, a little bit of a more separation, I'm gonna start delaying it. I'm gonna get more. All right. So it's not super noticeable, but we can hear it. Now, of course, as you go up on this uh, on this value, you're entering in you know a delay territory, but still. 40 milliseconds for a delayed sound, it's still very, very short. So, of course, you get the other controls, which is or which are this ones. And of course, you get a mix control. You can hear more of your uh, non-modulated uh, effect. In this case, non-chorus effect, get more of the original guitar. If you go all the way to the right, you just get the other one, right? All right, so notice that the sound it's not so different. If I stop it right here and go all the way back to the beginning, there's almost no difference. Because we are not doing much. We are just uh, grabbing the copy, playing the copy right here with a 40 second delay. But if we don't hear the original, uh, there's no difference. You're just playing this with 40 second delay, a uh, 40 millisecond delay. But if we blend them together, we start to get that sound, that coarse sound. All right, it's so pretty simple, just the basics. Now, right here, you get this control because, of course, since you're playing on a stereo track, you can go all the way down and make this mono. Now, the effect, it's uh, almost unrecognizable because everything is mono. Of course, we can hear that something is happening, but if you go stereo, it's a bit more noticeable. Now, on top of this, what you can do, you can make the sound uh, much wider. This, what again, it will do, it will uh, go to the left, go to the right, and add, uh, it's gonna slightly modify the one in the left and the right. And remember that golden rule. If something that it's uh, pretty much the same instruments sound a little bit different uh, on the left, on the left, and sounds a little bit different on the right, you get more separation. So if I go wide, you're gonna really hear this. Because the one in the left is a little bit different than the one in the right. All right. So now everything is a little bit more obvious. And this is one of the reasons we use curves just to make uh, things a little bit wider, right? Now, of course, what happens right now is remember, we are just playing the original and then we add on top uh, a copy of the original that gets slightly delayed. So everything is just the same, right? It sounds like the same guitar, but kind of a duplicated with a delay time. Now, what you get right here is a cut control. Because if I go all the way to the uh, all the way to the mix, so we only get uh, to listen the the, the chorus guitar, it sounds pretty much like the original. And if I go all the way here, we get the original in the center. So we have left, center, and right. Now what I want to do 
I'm going to apply some cut. So this is going to cut the highest frequencies. And now the main guitar, the one in the center, which is the original, it's going to be a little bit more present. The chorus guitars on the right and left are not that intrusive anymore. And just doing this, it would be the, the same to, let me find it first, it would be the same if we do something like this. We are just cutting the high frequencies. And we can actually hear this. If I go all the way 100% and cut everything, everything is dull. Now, why would we do this? Again, just to get the main guitar, the original guitar, a little bit more presence. Because the one in the left and the right, which are delayed, are not in the way. So, we use a little bit of mix, and we get a nicer chorus. Alright, so then we have uh, these controls right here at the bottom. We have, uh, we have them disabled. So, okay, so again, the golden rule is that we have one sound to the left, that it's slightly delayed, then we have one in the center, which is the original, and then we have one in the right, which again, it's slightly delayed. That's what we get the court, uh, we get this uh, time control, right? Okay. So then at the bottom, we get the NLFO. So what we can do, we can move this knob, go up and down, up and down. But remember that we have one in the left and one in the right. So the LFO, what it will do, it will give instructions in how to move the one in the left and the one in the right. And this one is going to be the amount of how much or how aggressive you're going to, you're going to be doing. And when you start moving, uh, moving the, the left and the right, uh, you're going to get this wobbling effect. Now, notice again that you get a white and a red. Maybe right here you cannot see it, but there you get a white line and a red line. So the one in the left, the one in the white, the white line, let me just do this. So now we're going to get them. The, the white one is going to be the left speaker. And the one in the right is going to be the right, the, the red is going to be the right speaker. All right. So this LFO, uh, if you don't know what LFO is, uh, go to the web and uh, just check what is an LFO. And once you know that, you just can come back and learn, learn this. So what we are doing, we are providing an instruction to this control. And this control will go right here and follow this instruction right here for the left and the right. And it's going to do this movement. Right now, right here, we cannot see it because we are going really slow. But right here, you get uh, the uh, the waveform. It's going to be a sine wave or triangle, which is a bit more aggressive. I'm going to use the sine wave. And this one is going to decide how fast this uh, wave is going to go. And I'm going to go all the way uh, back down. So we get pretty much the, the white and the right on the same spot. So I'm going to go and go faster. And this is going to go faster. This is the instruction of what we're going to do. So if it goes fast, it's like doing something like this, for example. Let's give you an example. So of course, then you get this control. We're going to talk about this in a second. Then we get this control. This is going to be deciding how much, how aggressive this movement of going up and down is going to be. So if I go and play it, we're going to start getting, uh, we're going to start recognizing the difference in sound. Let's we get that wobbling sound because we are going really fast and it's doing a lot. Let me go up in volume. Yeah, so we get that because we are doing something like this. If I turn this off and I do it manually, we get the same effect. But of course, you're not going to do it manually, right? Just better use an LFO. It's going to be pretty, uh, much consistent than you and it's going to do it better. So that's why we use it. But this is the only thing we're doing. We can go really slow. We're not going to get a very noticeable effect. But if we go fast, we start getting wobbles. All right. I believe you get the point. Now, uh, then we get this white line and the red line. And this is why we get the phase control. And again, if you don't know what phase is, go to the web, learn about phase, and then just come back. So uh, this one uh, will uh, um, disline or, you know, maybe change the phase of the left and the right. So if I go to 50%, Notice that the white, now it's the complete opposite of the left. So if the left is going up, the right right here is going to go down. So they're going in different, uh, different directions. And if that's, that's happening, remember the golden rule. If the one in the left sounds different and the one in the right sounds different, uh, we get uh, a different sound. We get a wider sound. So if I play it right now, notice that both of the faces, they're going in different uh, directions. Off.
so we get a different sound. It's not super noticeable, of course. So if you go to higher values, you're gonna get that wobbling again. And just to make it a little bit better, you can cut the highs, make it a little bit better. All right. So one thing you, you should you know take into account. All right, now, right now we are going fast, so we are entering in the territory of uh, kind of a super a weird effects. So if I go here and go up, yeah. All right. So of course you always do just a little bit of this. Unless you, you know, want that super uh, weird effects. Now, right here, if you go all the way to the left, they are going to be just perfectly aligned. You're going to do the same movement. And all the way to the right, they will do the same thing. So in 50%, uh, they are completely different. And you can, of course, do the in-betweens right here. Notice that they are not perfectly aligned. Same thing with the other way. So that's it. Then you get the, uh, the, wet, the wet effects. And on this one, what you can do, you can add an effects that will only react on the process signal. It will just not modify the original guitar. And this is, of course, depends on how much of the mix you're doing. So if I do a distortion, I'm going to go and put it right here. It's going to be a little bit aggressive. So I'm going to go down on this just to make it a little bit nicer. And I play it. You can hear that it's, you know, that we, have, we get a distortion. And if I go... All the way to the right, we just hear the distorted sound, which is the chorus. But if you do a little bit of blend, you get more of the original and a little bit of the distorted. All right. So remember, you get two things. You get the standard chorus, and then if you wish to get that wobbling, that moving, moving sound, you can enable, enable the LFO. It's completely up to you. All right. So I hope you had fun. Catch you on the next one.